A joyful hello to all of you. My name is Ming Kubutar, founder of the Circle of Joy that brings you self-mastery programs and retreats. It gives me great joy to bring to you this season's talk show, a series of interviews on choosing joy, secrets, and stories from all over the world. It is my diligent attempt to show you that joy is not a hockey pocket frivolous concept, but a discipline, a way of life much needed. If you want to be resilient, radiant, and unstoppable like a runaway train. So subscribe to my channel so that you can tap into the wisdom of people from all over the world. I will see you there. Hello and namaste. My name is Minko Bhutta, your host from India. Welcome, my beautiful listeners, to the third episode of a talk show, Choosing Joy, Secrets and Stories from Around the World. And today's conversation is woven around choosing joy that liberates versus self-sabotage that chains. And my speaker today is an extremely accomplished soul. He has been conferred with his his Excellency title by URGC, a selfless and neutral organization without borders. He is a consortium strategist and an ideationist, a seven times over author of bestsellers like Earth Wind, Book One, The Journey Begins, Book Two, Green Dot for Earth. And now as a visionary strategist, he has spoken before audiences of up to 2,500 in the US and Canada and hold your breath. He has over 50,000 followers on LinkedIn and I think much more after today. He's also a valuable contributing member of the Business Masters 360 Degrees and 360 Degree Nations Humanity Discovered. And I am honored to have shared spaces with him on both those platforms. Please join me to welcome His Excellency Ambassador Terry Earthwind Nichols. Terry, a real honor to have you accept my invite to be here today and to create ripples and hearts and smile and lips. I am honored to be here, Minku. And, uh, you know, hearing, hearing all the stuff I'm doing, it just, you know, it's it's quite amazing. It's been quite a journey in life so far, and um, I'm excited to where it's get, where it's headed. Did it you sound know, so. like I was speaking about someone else? <laughs> yeah, almost. Like, who's this guy? He sounds really interesting. <laughs> well, you deserve all that brilliance uh, there, Terry. So let me start uh, from the start, which is a great place to start, um, Terry Earthwin Nichols. Now, I'm dripping with curiosity about the connection to that you know, the Chinese script at the tail end of your name. And I also understood from our last conversation, which was what, like a few, maybe a year ago, that your middle name, Earthwind, has red Indian roots. So irrespective of what they say, that the cats die of curiosity, uh, to which, by the way, I always say, at least she died knowing. <laughs> and this show is about stories after all. So I do want to know, Terry, what is that Chinese script connection to your name? And of course, a little bit about your Red Indian legacy. Let's let's share that. So over to you. Well, the uh, Chinese at the end of my name is, is Mandarin for Earthwind. Oh. And Earthwind, I am a Chickamauga Cherokee, Native American um, uh, man. And uh, I received that uh, as my tribal name some mm -hmm. years ago, about 12 years ago now. And uh, I was given that name because I travel a lot. Okay. Uh, World Peace is a big part of, of what I do. I'm an environmentalist as well. Plus, I have a global company and an author, and, and uh, I do quite a bit. So uh, His Excellency Ambassador came from uh, my appointment to the United Refugee Green Council of Cyprus. Right. Um, on behalf of refugees worldwide and, and on behalf of the council, both worldwide and uh, here in the United States. Here recently, uh, I was honored to be appointed UN Peace Ambassador as well. So I am a UN Peace Ambassador at large, and uh, I have not, that just happened very recently. And so uh, haven't been put on an airplane or anything 
in yet, so we'll see how that goes. That's exciting. It's truly exciting. And, uh, you know, I, uh, I was born uh, in the Rocky Mountains of, of Idaho in the northwest portion of the United States. And as soon as I was able to get out of high school, I did not go right into college. I got my college education through the United States Navy, where I traveled about three fifths of the world for 20 years. Amazing. So uh, I have just loved my life. And that's so amazing. And so rightfully, Earth's wind rooted, uh, you know, with your connect to nature and Mother Earth and, and, and sail away, you know, you as fluid as, uh, you know, the wind and the space that's everywhere. Thank you so much for that story. And, you know, that, that's so beautiful to connect, keep going back to our roots. Um, so let's, um, Tarina, move on to deeper conversations here. And um, I read and, and, and I quote you here that we are all born with uh, an already established personality. But as we age, we become witness to various stimuli that changes the way we look at the world and how we act and react. And uh, well said, Terry, because I do believe uh, as well that perceptions of life can sometimes lead us down to a very dangerous road called self-sabotage. Uh, and uh, Terry, you having worked through this concept so extensively, and I think you are the best equipped to share with our listeners. Um, I would like to start with what does self-sabotage even mean and what does it look like? What are we talking about here? Well, for me, uh, lifelong self-sabotage has been for me to achieve some greatness in something mm -hmm. and then um, do unconscious uh, behaviors and things to sabotage that and, and uh, ruin it, end it, whatever it is that I was doing. And so uh, I, I'm obviously I've never liked that about myself and my journey in life is, is to seek out various ways to, to figure out why I do that. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, uh, the repetitive behavior cellular regression, which I've trademarked here in the United States is a question and answer sequence where um, instead of going to a memory and I tell you the story and the history of the memory, I inventory my five senses in that memory. So why do I do that? That's kind of interesting. Well, when we're in story, we're also in emotion. So when there's motion, there's emotion. And when there's emotion, there's ego asking questions, shortcutting things and those kinds of things. Well, when we take somebody through the, what we call the CR process session, we have them go to a memory, but don't tell us about the memory. Simply freeze frame it into a photograph. Mm -hmm. Now there's no motion, so there's no emotion, and ultimately no ego asking questions. So then we have our clients close their eyes, cutting off the outside world. They're not conscious about the cat uh, cleaning itself across the room as you're talking. You know, none of that thing. Mm -hmm. So a person can stay very fully present with us for two, three hours long. And in that two or three hours, we create an alternate neural pathway back to the back of the brain where the sensors are located. And we help them find an amnesic memory of significant emotional value early in, in childhood right. that drives their behavior later in life. So that's how all of that came about because the search was to fix me. But I, uh, that didn't solve the problem because it took another three years to, to train and find somebody good enough to trick the master. Right? So, uh, and once, once we did, and I found out what, what's driving my repeat performances, uh, we were able to start helping people around the world. That's awesome. It's, it's so true. Um... Terry, it always has to start with what you yourself can immerse and experience. And, you know, what they say, even the best poets, uh, the best Sufi, it's written from that grief. It's written from those traumas that are so deeply embedded. And you have this wonderful solution uh, with the... Uh, 
you, you call this the repetitive behavior cellular regression, if I'm not wrong. Is this called the RBCR? Is that what it is, right? RBCR. Yes, okay. it is. Yeah, it's a marvelous, marvelous. And it really makes me think, uh, Terry, when you were speaking that um, we humans, of course, we perish and we die, but not every one of us has really lived life. You know what I mean? As it's meant to be lived. Um, and since, you know, I talk a lot about joy, I feel that every 60 seconds that we spend uh, upset or uh, depressed or fearful, is one minute of joy that you will never come back. So thank you for that marvelous, marvelous solution that you're able to bring to people. Um, you know, I, to have solutions to this self-sabotage tragedy, as I call it. Uh, so um, I also really want to go a little bit more into uh, this uh, RBCR. Tell me a little bit more. Um, who are the people? who would be approaching you to seek solutions? And uh, what are the top self-sabotage? I know fear is one. What are the other things that people need to look at and identify as self-sabotage there, Terry? Well, repetitive behaviors for our definition is when you make a conscious decision to do something or not do something and fail to follow up uh, two or more times, that's a repetitive behavior. And when uh, amnesia takes over a memory, as we all know in behavioral uh, sciences, uh, it's a protection device. Nothing's broken, it's protecting you. Uh, and uh, to keep you protected, it starts uh, an active blocking system as you age uh, to, to keep that protected. So uh, as we all know, we learn linearly, one plus one is two, A, B, C, D, F, G, all of those types of things. And so it deflects and protects lineal thought, okay? It doesn't follow abstract thought real well. So when we disconnect the, the normal way of, of recalling a memory right. and use the five senses, it doesn't know how to track us. And when we create a new alternate neural pathway, it's not protecting that pathway like it was in lineal thought, okay? So uh, what ends up happening is we go through three memories um, in the way that I described. Mm -hmm. If you and I were sitting on the, at the end of a dock on a lake, there are certain things both of us would smell. Uh, we may taste the same things if we're, we're eating lunch or something. Um, there are certain things that we would touch, certain things that would be touching us, like our clothes, those kinds of things, and certain things that we would see. Now, we as the practitioners, we're looking for uh, what's not there. What are you missing, you know, sitting on that way? That mm -hmm. Yeah, that's obvious. Like, why can't you see anything on the left side of your vision but black, right? That was a perfect example of a young lady sitting on the dock. But. Okay, and why would she be sitting on a dock at her grandparents' lake home and taste uh, cotton candy? Maybe, but not likely. Okay, mm -hmm. cotton candy out on a lake is not very uh, noted, uh, common. So those all help us in, in helping our clients find this amnesic memory. And then they literally walk in the back door of, of the memory because the protection is in the front of the memory, not in the back. So when they come in there, the memory is so fresh. For me, I could smell the baby powder on, on the woman that, I, that, that was taking care of me at three months. Oh, incredible. Like just, just like, just like I was there. Yeah. But the memory as we call is so distinct. That's amazing. And yeah. And um, I've had um, people smell um, the, the, the pine needles uh, that they were laying on um, when, when they, they saw somebody uh, get run over by a car. You know, there's Incredible. things that, that can happen to you. Yes, that's a tragedy. But there's other things, you're just yes. a baby and you can't tell mom and dad that, oh my God, I'm horrified. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can only just kind of deal with it. And so, uh, this little girl who, who watched somebody get run over, she didn't know what to do. And it created an amnesia event. So 
the observation of something significant can can be just as devastating. Yeah, and I, it pretty much sounds like the blueprint. Um, if the subconscious um, that you know, then then you start to unravel, and a lot of it, I think, uh, if you're leading to self sabotage, would be. Uh, you know, just traumas um, and, and the reasons not known. I think it's amazing, amazing, valuable work that you're doing. Uh, and I, I never fail to understand, Terry, that, um, you know, we are all so hungry for excellence, right, in, in work, in relationships. And yet we ourselves are not putting self-love and self-talk on our, me on our menus, so what we're doing, uh, literally, for which you have the solutions to undo and unravel is literally we are boycotting our joyful existence. And it doesn't make sense, really. Right, Terry? It just doesn't make sense how yeah. we're leading our lives, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, um, um, Terry, this is a subject talking about... Um, deep-rooted uh, memories and traumas and the inner child healing that I do so much of. I just want to thank you, Terry, before we go into a lighter mode uh, for validating the intentions for this talk show. Thank you so much. And, you know, having these meaningful solution-driven conversations to, you know, to reach joy. I'm really, really glad. And I, I echo these uh, sentiments in my four week self mastery uh, code that I'll uh, you know, run for corporates. I, I think it's time to now uh, go to the next phase. Let's belt up for the rapid fire round. And I love it because sure. it, if you're ready, uh, because it allows for our true spirit to come out and who knows, uh, Terry, what we're gonna hear from you know, a memory uh, of the past might flash you by, right? Um, so I invite uh, Terry one word in one sentence, and you know you could be as candid and as spontaneous and as joyful, and just bear your soul. So are you ready to let's get the energy going? Yes, I am. Okay, Terry, thank you. Let's swing into it. Your idea of joy. Joy. It's a release of the past and the future, just be in the present. I often teach in presence is the point where manifestation becomes action. When you're there, there is pure joy. Absolutely. The mindfulness keeps going back to it. An aha moment that you've had recently. You know, aha. Ah. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, there's been a few. An aha moment is... Um, one of, one of my mentees mm -hmm. um, took a teaching from me and uh, he reported back to me uh, that not only does his company want to do it, they promoted him to be the leader of it. And I went, aha, wonderful. <laughs> I love that. Yes. I love that. Yes, the aha moment. I am telling you if our life could be just a collection of them. Uh, one word for power, Terry. One word. For what? For power, to be powerful. For power. What is for power for you, yeah. Presence. If mm, you're present, it, you know, you're powerful as yes. you want to be. It's know. in the moment. It's the pauses, isn't yes. it? What right. animal out there comes to your mind when you think of power? Papa? A what? Bear. When I think of what? Of power. What animal? Yeah, what animal smells? Yes. A bear? There is a very sacred animal in my, in my world. Yes, and uh, uh, I tell you, for me, it's a snail, but that's another story, a snail, a small little snail. It's a story for another time. Now, ah, if you could, okay. uh, yeah, if you could complete the sentence, life is as beautiful as? Life is as beautiful as... A morning sunrise and the dew on the grass. Oh, that's my favorite. You stole my lines. <laughs> now, that leads us to the last question. What brings you joy when you think about it? Would it be a childlike laughter 
would it be 10 new projects with your new client or a spa watching the sun go down? All of the above. I, you know, when uh, we find one. that amnesic event in a client, that's mm -hmm. one of my four divisions in my company is the CR process. And when you help them find and, and that, that, that memory that has ruled their life. And, you know, I, we just took somebody 75 years old through, through this. Wow. And it is such a, such a joy to see that, that awakening, that, that, that brilliance in the eyes, that, oh my God, look, you know, that's so beautiful. That's so amazing. So I would, um, yeah, so I guess that's all three of those for you. So deep gratitude, Terry, uh, for your candid and heartful contributions. And I seriously love these kind of conversations that just shift the direction of change. Uh, before we end, Terry, where can the audience find you if they wanted to consult with you and connect with you? What's a good place to be? I tell them, go to Google or Bing mm -hmm. and uh, do a search for His Excellency Ambassador Terry Earthwind Nichols. There is one in the world. You have my YouTube, social media, websites, any and everything that you want to know about me is right there at your fingertips in the, in the search. That's the easiest. Search my name like it's on the, on the, uh, on the screen right now. That's awesome, awesome, Terry. And I wish loads and loads of people out there are hearing this. Thank you for being my ambassador and bringing ripples of joy to the world. I thank you so much for being here. Uh, and uh, any last words? Well, thank you for inviting me. I'm honored to be considered somebody that could be on your show right now. Uh, you have an a very unique concept and the reach is, is there and, and you're a very, very authentic person. So you're a joy to just to talk to. So thank you very much for allowing me to be part of your world. Thank you, Terry. You absolutely, these validations is what keep us all going. And I think these heartful, authentic conversations is something we all need to have more of. Now, I always end our talks with a quote. And the thought for today is a little prayer. Dear God, I have a problem. And the problem is me. <laughs> so here is to all of you, make sure your worst enemy is not living in between your ears. Stay with the thought, be joyful, and I will see you on the 15th of September of October. So thank you, Terry. Let's say bye to thank our audience, you. global thank audience. You. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening in. See you soon. Bye now. Bye.